Um, well, first of all, I want to thank the CNYC for inviting me today. Um, all the work I do down south, I do it mostly for youth. Um, so I want to thank them for um, giving me the opportunity to talk to my youth for the very first time. So don't be too hard on me, please. <laughs> so miigwech uh, to the CNYC and Alex. Uh, well, I'm going to introduce myself because I know that many of you don't know who I am, and that's very okay. So my name is Meite Saganash. I'm from Oswanipi, but I live in, um, in uh, Quebec City. Uh, I do conferences for a living. Um, I'm a future law student. I'm starting university um, in August. <laughs> I'm, now, I'm now writing two books. One of them is on uh, the political situation in, uh, in the province of Quebec. And the other one, I'm doing a part um, in a book about energy east, uh, the pipelines, on the Aboriginal perspective of it. So yeah, um, usually it's going to be really different from what I do usually. Usually uh, I speak to non-Aboriginal people about uh, who we are to fight the stigmas, to fight the stereotypes. But today I wanted to share my own story because I feel that my story is, the, is very similar to probably many of you um, here today or on the land, so yeah. So um, I was, uh, I was uh, raised in Quebec City, so out of the community, and I still live in Quebec City today. Um, I grew up with my mother because my, uh, my dad, uh, Romeo, uh, was away uh, most of the time for work. He was really busy. He's been busy for like 30 years now. So I grew up with my mom out of the community, so I was far from my, from my culture for a long time. And, um, you know, in Quebec City, we were, we're in a, living in a small village called Bois Châtel. And when I was in school, in uh, primary school, you know, the other kids thought we looked funny, because we had this, my brother, my brother and my sister and I had these very political faces, I would say, strong jaw, uh, were brown, bushy eyebrows, you know. So um, at a very young age, I got bullied for being Cree. Uh, so I think, as a reflex, I abandoned my culture because I was feeling ashamed. I was ashamed of being Cree at some point. My brother got beaten up quite a few times um, for being Cree, my sister as well. Because uh, they were seeing, uh, the kids were seeing my dad negotiating on, on TV and probably their parents were saying, oh, look at, look at them Indians, like they're asking for everything, they want everything. So they were telling the same thing to us at school. So at, very, at a very young age, I had to give up on my culture for my own security. So I... I'm, you know, I'm a half Cree, even though I hate seeing this because once a Cree, always a Cree, you know? Um, I grew up very lost because I really didn't know who I am, um, who I was. So I was very lost and when you're lost, you don't know where you're going, what do you do? For myself, at, age, at the age of 11, I started doing drugs. Um, I, and I wasn't just only smoking pot. And after that came alcohol, and I was a heavy drinker by the age of 13. Um, and I, I, I was really suffering from my dad's absence, and I really didn't know how to heal, because I was so, I was so hopeless, and I had no resources to heal. So what I did is I kept doing drugs, I kept drinking, and at by the age of 10, I started being depressed twice a year. And that went on for 10 years. Um, I was always depressed and I, I thought I kind of got used to it. I, I thought that was part of myself that I was gonna suffer for my whole life. And I got used to be sad and that's a very, very sad thing when I look back. Um, yeah, I thought that was who I am. Like, I, was, I thought melancholy and depression was all I was. So 
Um, I kept drinking, and I kept drinking, and I kept doing drugs. And at some point, when I was 15, 16, uh, I was drinking at least 12 beers a day, at least. And you know, I'm 100 pounds, <laughs> so imagine what I looked like. And I was snorting so much cocaine that I, my nose was bleeding all the time. And, um, you know, um, back in September, I was, I, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't doing drugs at that time, but in September I was, you know, I was drinking the whole summer and I was still drinking. And eventually I was so lost that in September I tried to commit suicide. That's not a very long time ago. So I spent a month in the hospital thinking about what was happening to me and where I was going. Because I was a very successful student, even though I was drinking. But deep down inside me, there was something that was missing, that was keeping me, that was preventing me from being happy, from being a person. And at that point, I, I thought to myself, I said, holy, I was like, I've become a statistic because the suicide rate for Aboriginal people is five to eight times higher than non-Aboriginal people. And I was like, I'm a number. I'm now a number. And by drinking that much, I was like, I'm the perfect portrait of the stereotype, of the Cree stereotype. And I was what society wanted me to be, a plain drunk Indian. And at that point, I was like, what am I doing? And I decided to myself, I told myself, that's enough. I want to be happy now. And I got, a, when I was in hospital, I got a diagnosis, two diagnoses actually. Um, so the, the psychiatrist sat me in her office and she said, you know why you're, you're depressed twice a year? Almost every, like, at the same time. You're type 2 bipolar. You have type 2 di bipolar disorder. And you have social anxiety, because sometimes I wouldn't go somewhere because I was too afraid of it. Because I, w I w didn't want to see people. I'm, I was afraid of being alone in public spaces. And I was like, I'm a good student. I can have a bright future and I can be happy too. So at that point, I decided to be happy and to accept myself. And you know what? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm an activist for Aboriginal rights. So I know what's going on in every community in Quebec and Canada mostly. And I'm sick and tired. I am sick and tired of seeing Aboriginal kids taking their own lives. I'm tired of it. And I want, you to, to, I want you to know that seeking help is OK. We all have our flaws. And a diagnosis doesn't define who you are. My name is not bipolar type 2 disorder. My name is not social anxiety. No, I'm Maiti Saganesh. I'm Cree, and I'm proud of it. That's who I am. And by accepting who you are, from that point, you can work on yourself. So that's what I did. I was in hospital for a month. I had plenty of time to think, to think about what I'm going to do to be happy. So I, and I started to accept that I was Cree more and more. And I, when I was in hospital, I, I was thinking about uh, my childhood when I was spending three months in the bush in the middle of nowhere in the Broadback Valley. I used to, th to think about northern lights, all the animals, about me fishing every day and catching like these big trouts but releasing them in the water. And from that point I was like, wow. I miss my land much more than I thought I was. And 
I started reconnecting with my culture, and it's really, really hard in Quebec City because there's, I think I'm like, my siblings and I are probably the first, the, the, the only Crees there. <laughs> there's a lot in Montreal, but in Quebec City, there's mostly new people and um, went out people. So it's, it was really hard, but I have found some way uh, to reconnect with my culture. And uh, Matthew's son really helped me finding a way. And I opened my heart and I really found salvation through my own culture. I, I was, so I started learning back the language, Inuimu. And I started being open to that kind of, of things. So I started having these beautiful dreams about animals, about all kinds of stuff. I don't know, I still don't know what they mean, but <laughs> I will find out eventually. And I started having this dream uh, three months ago. So in my dream, I'm on a boat, and the, the water is really calm, no waves. But um, something is pushing my boat. There's no motor, but I'm, I'm on the boat, and I'm going towards the island where Numshom is buried. And I started waking up in the morning happy, feeling insecurity. Sorry. Because I realized that for so many years, by abusing alcohol, by taking substances, I was pushing back my ancestors and all these good spirits and energy, I was pushing them back. And by accepting, finally accepting who I am, they were back and I, I was waking up in the morning feeling insecurity. And I told, my, I told my dad, and he sent me a smiley face, he's like, Métis, they're, they're always going to be there. It's a sign. It, they're telling you that they're always going to be there, protecting you. So from that point, I started being really interested in my culture. And I started, um, my mom showed me how to fix meat, how to do all these traditional kind of things. And for once in my life, I didn't feel useless. And in my work, I wanted to decol decolonize the world so much, but I had to decolonize myself first. And that's, I'm not done yet. <laughs> I'm far from being done. But I'm, that's where I'm, I'm on my way. And that's what I'm doing. So I started, you know, learning back all the traditions, not all of them, because that's, that's a gift as contemporary human beings, as contemporary Aboriginal people. We have that gift. We don't have to like everything, because now we have technologies we have. So we don't have to learn everything. So you can take traditions that you like and include them in your life. You do what you love, but it's important. It's really important that we, we integrate these kind of things in our lives and really really it's my culture and I'm saying it again it saved my life it, and it's still saving it right now and wow <laughs> trying not to cry <laughs> um, and that's what that's something I wanted to tell the youth from um, from what I experienced is that when I started accepting myself, my work became greater. What I was doing in life made sense. Because, you know, I was advocating for Abor Aboriginal rights, but I was myself distancing myself from my culture. But now that I, that I am accepting it and that it's part of me, now my work has gone like so like far. And I gave a speech last Friday in front of a thousand people at the Women's Summit in uh, Montreal. And I talked about Nokom. How, I talked about how Nokom is uh, the incarnation of that strength, that resilience, 
within their people. Because us Crees, that's what we are. Brilliant, strong, and resilient people. After all these years, after 400 years of colonialism, we're still here. We still exist. We still speak our language. And still 30% of the Crees live um, a traditional way of life. And do not, think, do not take everything you have for granted. Because I would give so much, so much to go back to a Swanipi, to be with Nokom, to take her to the bush, to speak my language, this amazing, this most beautiful language that is Inuimo. And I hear so many, so many young individuals in the community saying, oh God, I have to, I have to reconnect with my, with my culture. It's at the tip of your fingers. Seize that opportunity. It's really important. And what I learned, what I learned from, from this whole healing process is that identity is not a number. It's not defined by a number. I used to think, because when I was, when I was in, high, in, uh, in primary school, kids would tell me, you're half-breed. You're not even Cree, you're not even white, you're half-breed. So I thought to myself, by healing, I was like, no, my identity is not defined by a number. I'm Cree, and that's who I am. Ishti is where I belong, and that's what I choose to be. And I don't know, because I'm going to university in, in August for uh, at least four years, going to law school. I don't know when I'll come back to the land. I don't know how I'm going to come back. <laughs> But I know I'll come back, sorry. <laughs> I know I'll come back because for once in my life, I feel like I belong some somewhere. <laughs> and that's the most important thing in life. Find yourself. Find yourself. Find what you love. Find what you want to be and achieve your goals, achieve your dreams. And it's not because you're Cree that you're not smart as any other people. And we have that gift of being so strong and seeing life in a different way or environment and being so connected with, with our environment. We have that gift that the, the non-Aboriginal people don't have. Be proud of who you are. Be bold, be loud, and be proud. Really, be proud of who you are. Thank you. Miigwech. <laughs>